Hello, my name is Janine Campbell, and I'm a visual arts teacher in Byron Center, Michigan. I have had the privilege to teach 7th and 8th grade students in an environment that offers students a wide range of learning opportunities, both in and outside of the classroom. Using both traditional and digital means, I incorporate collaborative projects, field trips, and guests into my curriculum to celebrate and expand students' understandings of how art is made and why. One of my favorite ways of bringing outside learning in is through connecting and collaborating with others. Two years ago, I had the opportunity to attend the first ever TEDx Grand Rapids Livestream for Education event. This event was for teachers and students interested in sharing ideas, and luckily I met a teacher and we were able to do just that. Her name is Kim Westorp and she is a teacher at our Intermediate School District in Kent County. During the TEDx event, we exchanged information and decided to collaborate on a project where her students would select artwork from my students' online gallery on Artsonia to make new art from. The result was a collaboration that invited her students to reimagine the work done by mine and then share their work back to the group that originally created it. We had a display of the work at her school and then at mine and an opportunity for students to discuss their process. My students had also an opportunity to react to the work that was created. Here's a video of the experience and some of my students' reactions. As you can see, this opportunity allowed students to see that their work is being viewed beyond the walls of our classroom through our online gallery, and it really allowed for that outside learning to come in and our learning to go out and be influencing other artists as well. Field trips are probably one of the most obvious ways to go beyond the walls of the classroom and broaden the learning experience for students. Each fall in Grand Rapids, Michigan, we have the largest art competition called Art Prize. Artists from around the world gather in the city and display work that is voted on by the public to receive cash prizes. In coordination with this event, I have taken students to Art Prize to interact with the art and speak to the artists who have made it. This trip is one we look forward to each year because it offers students the opportunity to get new ideas and see new concepts being displayed. Ultimately, they get to see if they agree or disagree with the popular vote of the public. In addition to viewing the art, students also have the opportunity to create art in a variety of workshops and events. Their works are often displayed in public, making them part of the Art Prize event. This year, they even had a competition for youth and one of my students was among the top 10 winners. Offering authentic experiences for students to create and interact with art is essential in prom promoting quality programming and standards within my discipline. I also take my students to the Meyer Gardens Sculpture Park in Grand Rapids, Michigan each spring. With a travel grant from the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, I'm able to take students at a minimal cost. We are, uh, we are led on tours by docents that inform students about the work on display ranging from Chihuly to Calder. We then tour the grounds and discuss the engineering it takes to create large-scale works that they have on display. By engaging students in this trip, they see art up close and how its surroundings can impact the meaning of each piece. We also discuss the logistics of how large sculptures are made and maintained to last through the elements. By taking the time to allow students to see work in authentic ways, I'm able to get them to consider how their work should look in relation to where it exists. This broadens both the perspective of why art is made and how we interact with it in public space. The final way that I promote outside learning in my classroom is through the use of guest speakers. 
I have had an awesome privilege of having a former teacher of mine, ceramist Paul Flickinger, come and create for my students as he discusses the history of ceramics and clay. This demonstration gives students insight to the past uses of clay and how we use it today. He also goes through the scientific process that is used when clay is made, fired, and glazes as he creates a variety of vessel forms in front of the students. Another artist I've had visit my class in person is printmaker Cindy Ford, due a grant from the National Art Education Foundation. She came and did a three station workshop where students were able to experiment with a variety of printmaking tools and techniques. Having these local artists visit the school and bring with them their outside expertise offered students real life examples of artists who work and create in the field. In addition to physically having artists come and discuss their work with my students, I have been able to broaden the scope by turning to digital means. Through connections made on Twitter, I have been able to have several artists visit us via Skype. Noli Novak is an artist and illustrator for the Wall Street Journal. I had been using her work as inspiration for years before tweeting her an example of student work inspired by hers. She tweeted back and we were able to arrange a meeting that allowed my students to talk with her about her work and share their work for critique. This experience opened my students' eyes to realize that their work has an audience beyond our classroom and that what they make is being seen by others. It also offered them the unique opportunity to talk with an artist in which their work was inspired by and get her feedback on what they could do differently or um, how she felt about their work being inspired by her work. In a similar fashion, I contacted teen comic sensation Emma T. Caps, and here is a video that shows her visit to our classroom. Getting to meet her and seeing like the process she makes the comics and the way she like she starts out with just a neat little sketch that she didn't really think was that good but all of us look at it like it's really good and then she, the process she goes on to Photoshop and how she edits all of it to make it come out so cool. Interesting how she had her sketches that she thought were really bad and we thought were good and how she put them into Photoshop and they became even better. Photoshop and how she made like all the colors and she'd outline, outline her the hair and how the The most recent Skype type interview happened with Brandon Foy. I first saw him speak at the 2013 National Art Education Association convention. I was inspired by his story and wanted to share it with my students. He created this vote video and posted it online.
His work was viewed by many and it ended up landing him a job with Microsoft. I was so inspired by his story and how art impacted his life as a former Scholastic Art and Awards winner. I wanted to share that story with my students. So I tweeted him and asked him if he would be interested in doing an interview with my students for class. Unfortunately, we couldn't line up times and so what ended up happening is that my students were able to videotape themselves with the questions that they wanted answered and Brandon videotaped the answers to give back to my students. This allowed me to have an archive of these answers from Brandon of how he made the video, things that inspire him, what types of artwork he's in, he was interested in making as a middle school student that I could then play to all of my classes in the segments that I needed as I needed them. By not limiting my guests to physically be at the school or even with a time constraint, I'm offering students the opportunity to learn from experts in the field in a variety of media and methods. This has had a tremendous impact in my classroom because students are able to interact and ask questions that may have not been possible prior to the opportunity. Whether it's through our online school gallery, taking kids out on field trips, or having guest artists come into my classroom, I've seen my students' horizons broaden as a result of outside learning, both in the classroom and also being able to experience learning that we're doing in the classroom and the outside world. So consider that as you plan for the upcoming year and for years to come.